Is this thing on? Welcome back to Big Mouth and fancy seeing you here in June. I'm very welcome, my friends, and especially my enemies. Come in, sit down, no touching. I don't do the touching. And welcome to my exclusive video where I talk about how you go at a Superman movie. I don't mean how you go to the cinema to watch a Superman movie. I mean, how do you make the greatest superhero movie of all time about the greatest superhero of all time and make the whole world fall in love with it because that's what happened with Superman the movie whether you like Superman the movie or you like Man of Steel I know people have this kind of com competing thing versus Superman the movie and Man of Steel I don't I love both movies so how do you make a great film that everybody can love that makes maybe a billion a couple of billion because that's what Superman movies sh should be making a great Superman movie now Man of Steel made around 600 million, right? Now, this is for a very divisive film that I love, by the way, that only half the audience appreciated. And that goes for pundits and critics and the reviews and, and all of that. And I think it actually um, wasn't voted fresh on Rotten Tomatoes either. Not that I care about things like that. If you know me, you know I couldn't give a shit about critical opinion or Rotten Tomatoes. So let's look at that. A divisive movie, only appreciated by half the cinema-going audience, gets 600 million. Imagine if everyone had loved Man of Steel. You are talking at least over a billion dollars globally would have been a big, big success. And Zack Snyder could have made any dark superhero film over at DC he wanted. He did do Batman v Superman, and I'm very appreciative of that film. I love that. And that film is fucking amazing. It really is. If you appreciate that type of thing, it's brilliant. But when you look at Superman, and when you look at Batman, they have millions of fans reading their comics around the world. And they expect certain things from their characters. And Man of Steel and Batman v Superman don't have those things that people expect from those characters. I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm not saying it's right. Now, here, today, I want to talk about... How you go at a Superman movie. First of all, the TV show Krypton, if you ever watched it, which was developed by um, David S. Goyer, um, who literally um, co-wrote um, the, the story for Man of Steel, and really is based from his Krypton sequence on Man of Steel, loosely. But they've got a lot of themes and kind of things that he created for Krypton. On that TV show. Now, of course, that's set in the past of that. And obviously, it's not the same Krypton. It's not the same universe because, for one thing, all the Zods are people of colour. And we know Michael Sh Shannon was Zod on Man of Steel. But that's neither here nor there. How do we make a film everybody loves? Everybody loves Superman the movie. Filmmakers, when they talk about making a Superman movie, talk about the tone and the kind of film Superman the movie was. And that's the kind of Superman movie they believe should be made now. Now, people who absolutely love Man of Steel and loathe Superman the movie wouldn't agree with that. So as I say, I think if you marry the tone from Superman the movie and Man of Steel, you've got something really interesting. Now, people who are the opponents of Superman the movie will say, look, Superman the movie was, um, was a creature of its time. But people absolutely loved it. And I think people look at the comics and look at that film and say, wow, it's kind of like for like. He's inspirational. His costume's bright. He smiles. But as I say, people have people who love Superman and have loved him all their lives and have read the, most of the comics want to see certain things. They want to see bright colours. They want to see human. They want a humour. They want Superman to be relatable. Um, and I looked at this, and I've, I've spoken about this before, of course, my Superman script, um, which I'm going to have to do a, a second kind of draft of, is really looking at Superman as a character. And in my, in my, in my film, Superman's been on the earth for a thousand years, um, but really people don't know him so well. He's travelled the world for a, a, a thousand years. Um, he feels... The thing is with Superman as well, he may be an alien, but literally he's been on Earth, as a, let's not forget, as an illegal immigrant for a thousand years. So his reactions should be human and his struggle should be, 
should he kind of embrace his Kryptonian side? Now, this is why I think Smallville is the greatest version of this character. Clark Kent, even as a younger version of the character, has very human responses. And there is this struggle. Um, he's divided between his human side and his Kryptonian side. He's divided between jor -El. He's divided by Jonathan Kent, you know, and, and stuff like that. And I think this is why Smallville is the best irritation of Superman, even though he's not Superman till the very, very final episode. You can see the struggle. I was literally born here, literally, right? I was here as a baby. I only know humanity. I don't know Kryptonians. When, so when he discovers his father, his father seems like this dark figure that's trying to lure him into something really bad. And that's how his adopted father and his adopted parents, Jonathan and Martha, see it. And, and I think if you take what Krypton did and you take what Smallville did and you can marry that into a kind of Superman movie, I think you've got something really, really special. But no one wants to sit there and be bored. People want to see Superman flying, being heroic, using his powers, sometimes punching people, getting in big brawls. And I think this is where, when I first looked at writing a Superman script, which of course nobody told me to, nothing to do with Warner Brothers, but because we're in this kind of situation now, because what, what happened with Justice League and nobody has a clue what Warner Brothers plans, if any, they have for Superman, I just sat down and I thought about it. And I've always heard people say, Superman is a difficult character to write. You can take that as bullshit. This is a character that has so many elements, Krypton, Smallville, Metropolis, the fact that he's an immigrant, the fact that he's got all these powers and he's got this responsibility. And something else I thought about when I kind of, I, I watch Superman versus the Elite, the animated movie all the time. I've never read the graphic novel, but I, I, I have seen that film. And all through the film, Manchester Black is trying to persuade Superman to kill his enemies so they don't come back and cause society more problems. And of course, we know that's not what Superman's about. Now, there's an interesting element when they think they've killed Superman and he comes back. And Superman creates this illusion where it looks like he's killing all of Manchester's people, right? And he's beating the absolute shit out of Manchester Black. And Manchester says a brilliant thing to him, a brilliant thing. He says to him, what are you doing? This is not you. And Superman says, this is what you wanted, Manchester. You are right. I became what you needed me to become. And Manchester Black is totally broken because the whole film, this guy thinks he's clever. He's smug, he's arrogant. He's got his abilities. He's manipulated society to turn against Superman. And he thinks he's killed Superman. And it's a brilliant moment when Superman comes back from the dead. He was never dead, of course. And he becomes what Manchester said he should become. Manchester says one thing. What are you doing? This isn't you. It's a brilliant moment. And this is why I looked at Superman versus the Elite. And I think it's a great story. Not to adapt totally, but to take elements out of. So you've got Manchester Black and his Elite team in this movie, which they are. But also, uh, you... you you look at other, you, you 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 look at other elements and, and and you and you look at other elements and you, I really really did think about what character what other character I could bring into this to make the enemy he he has to fight a very a very emotional character a, a, a very a, 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 you know so it's not just Superman beating a villain but it's something really really emotional and I think that's what made Captain America. Um, and The Winter Soldier, a, a, a very, very good film. So I decided to bring um, John Corbin in, a.k.a. Metallo. Now, in my story, John Corbin and Clark can work, and went because in my story, Clark hasn't worked at the Daily Planet yet. You know, he starts working at the Daily Planet. John and Lois um, become very, very, very good friends. And then John becomes Metallo, something happens to him. And then, so you've got this thing where Superman's friend becomes this, I, well, I don't want to call him Cyborg, I don't want to con, you know, confuse you with the Cyborg character, but literally, he does become this Cyborg powered by Kryptonite, the only thing that can hurt Superman. So by having this, and I wouldn't like to call Cyborg a villain, but someone 
who basically can kill Superman because he's powered by kryptonite. It's a very important thing. But also, when uh, Manchester Black arrive in the Elite, he begins to say that you have to find a way to kill um, Metallo. Now, I don't know as such, but I think there is a way how they can dampen um, Metallo's powers and kryptonite powers. There is a way to kill him. And I'm not sure if it's just a case of pulling out the uh, kryptonite heart out, or I'd have to read a bit more up on that. But... So Superman is this, this situation where Manchester Black wants him to kill Metallo. But, of course, Superman doesn't kill. He hasn't killed anyone in a thousand years, right? So elements of this, we have back flashes, flashbacks, shall I say, where he remembers the Second World War and people are pressuring him to kill the Germans and Hitler, the Nazis. And he ref Superman refuses because he's been on Earth for a thousand years, right? And he becomes under pressure from the then society, the government, to kill Hitler, and Superman refuses to do it because he feels if he kills Hitler, he, he, you know, then he can kill anyone, and that's not what he wants to do, and that's the whole point. Even though what Hitler's doing is grotesque and terrible, he's not willing to kill anyone, and that's not how he wants to solve the problem, and he doesn't believe he's the one who should solve this problem, even though he has been there, he has been protecting people, as I say, people don't know him so well at that point. Um, so he has these flashbacks of being under pressure to kill Hitler because he's under this, he's got this problem again where um, Manchester Black and the elite have manipulated um, the um, society around the world to go against Superman. Maybe Superman is the hero of yesterday. Maybe he's an old fashioned hero. Hey, I'm Manchester Black. I'm willing to kill everyone who puts you in danger. And all of a sudden, children start to look up to him. So those elements I've taken out of the um, Superman versus Elite moment. So there is this really personal, um, emotional battle uh, within Clark, within Superman. What does he do here? So, and I think it's very important in the next Superman film that there is a commentary on Superman's no-kill policy because of what happened in Man of Steel, because that divided the audience, and really to show people why Superman um, doesn't kill. And I think this is a very, very exciting exciting element. Also, by having flashbacks, as I've explained before, you show uh, Superman in his action comics costume and then show a, a varied amount of flashbacks where he wears his other comic book costumes as well. Really, really exciting because that's never happened within the movies. Um, so they're doing Kingdom Come on um, Arrow versus Elseworlds. So that's the first time I think we're ever going to see on live action a Superman with, a, a, you know, with a comic book Superman costume. How that's never happened before really is a bit of a disgrace. Um, so you've got these, you've got a story here. You've got Superman who's been on Earth for a thousand years. He's only just started at the Daily Planet. He meets Lois Lane, and, and you know, um, Jimmy Olsen is my version of Connor Kent in this story as well. Um, Superman has a, you know, a, adopts um, Jimmy Olsen, and there's a backstory there and how that happens. So. They have a different relationship. I've always felt that Jimmy Olsen is like the companion in Doctor Who. And, of course, I've discussed this before as well. So there's lots of interesting elements, and it's very important with Lois Lane that she's more than a love interest, that she is the character um, that we've always loved, um, but she's not someone who um, is a hater. Lois Lane does what she does because she cares about people and she wants to expose people, to, you know, big companies, people like Luther who want to take advantage of society, right? And I think that's important about Lois Lane, and that's really an aspect we haven't seen too much of. I want people to know why she does what she does, and of course she's in love with Clark and Superman, and of course there's that element. But also in this story, I want to cameo the Justice League. You know, if Superman's been on Earth for over a thousand years, then obviously there has to be a Justice League. And when... Um, you know, um, when Metallo first appears and uh, Manchester Black and the Elite first appear, he goes to the Justice League asking for counsel, asking for advice. And there is a relationship between him and Wonder Woman. Personally, I don't see why, you know, because because um, this is a film set in the future, I think there's lots of exciting things we can do, but there's no reason why Gal Gadot can't play this. Why can't this be Henry Cavill? Why can't this just be a thousand, you know? But then if I'm going to, then again, thinking about it, because I've just forgotten what the whole, um, the whole element is, of course, that this is a, super, a very different Superman. 
who hasn't worked at the Daily Player. So maybe you could use Henry and say that that story, but really maybe a recast would be better. I apologise, I wasn't really thinking there. Um, I think Patty Jenkins would be the right person to direct this movie and co-write it with Jeff Johns. I feel that she has the sensibilities to make a very, very interesting film. And I um, also feel, I'll go back to what I said, Gal Gadot should play Wonder Woman. I think she could still play Wonder Woman. Um, she necessarily wouldn't be the DCEU Wonder Woman, maybe. But I do think there's lots of exciting things you can do with Superman and not just the script that I'm writing. I believe that Superman the movie, Superman 2 and Man of Steel are all wonderful films in their own rights. And I think, and this is why I don't agree with people who say Superman's a difficult character to write because he's too powerful. I think it's very important, as I said on the top of the show, that he has human reactions like he did in Smallville, that you give him a, a, a personality and the character. Superman doesn't have to be this. Superman needs to be pure to a point. But sometimes he can do the wrong thing, then he learns from that, and then he does the right thing. It's about re re relay relatability. And Superman can be relatable if you want him to. But you've got to look at what people want him to be. And then you can make him a very, very interesting character. And it is important with Superman um, that you do make him something really special because someone that people can look at, maybe uh, laugh with sometimes, cry with sometimes. But as Manchester Black said, this isn't you. And this is what a lot of people said with Man of Steel and Batman v Superman. Superman, this isn't you. And as much as I appreciate those films, they do have a point. People don't want to see Superman killing. Now, people can come at me and say he killed the three villains from Krypton in the Fortress of Solitude. That's bullshit. He didn't. We don't really know what happened to them. It was a bit odd, but we don't actually know what happened to them when they when he chucks them and they slid down the ice. Let, let, let's be honest about that, at least. Um, but Superman is a very, very, very interesting character. And there are so many things you can do with him. He's so amazing. People are interested in him. People would go to see his movie. But you have to give people something to watch. Superman could be in a movie that's the greatest CBM you've ever seen. And it's up to Warner Brothers to utilise the best of Superman and put him on the big screen and make a, you know, to really think deeply about a Superman movie. There's a lot of people talking about Shazam and saying that's how Superman should be. I disagree. I disagree because Shazam's great. And I love the way Shazam's brought in, like, young kids and families. That's great for Shazam. But that isn't Superman. Superman is a much deeper character than that. Um, as I say, to a, to a point, he has to be pure, but there's so much to him. And I, I think having human reactions, being torn between Earth and Krypton, are very, very good things. In fact, um, one of the ideas I had at the end where he has to make a decision whether he's going to go out there and search for Krypton or stay on Earth or something. Something that happens at the end of this film. There's so many things you can do with Superman. He's such an exciting character to do, to write. I found him very exciting to write because, because there's so much media on him in terms of comics and TV shows, you know, The New Adventures of Superman, The Adventures of Superman, you know, um, Smallville, uh, Superboy. Um, there's so many things that can be done with this character. And I think now, as filmmakers, people have to sit down and say, how do we go at Superman? And it's quite simple. It's time to listen to what people want. It is very important because Man of Steel was a passion project for Zack Snyder, um, Christopher Nolan and David S. Goyer. It's a great story. It's a great movie. I love it. But now we have to look at what diehard Superman fans want. And then I believe if we make a movie, a relatable film about a relatable character who happens to be a superhero, we could have something very special on our hands.